What's going on, everyone? Charlie here. We're going to take another look at some BlackRock uh, iShares ETF terminology and literature. Going to spend some more time reverse engineering some of the iShares uh, methodology for determining how well an ETF is performing. Let's take a look. So there's five metrics for evaluating an ETP or an ETF. ETP just means exchange traded product. So there's five things. There's usage, trading costs, premium discount behavior, tracking, and primary market efficiency. So using BlackRock's own website documentation, we will reverse engineer their product evaluation procedure and see if it makes sense. And we're going to be referring to the IJR ETF that is in GameStop that sees tremendously high volume and has a lot of weird metrics surrounding it. So ETPs have become indispensable tools for analyzing and investing in financial markets, but not all ETPs are created equal. While there are many ways to evaluate ETP performance, this paper explores the five key metrics that I just mentioned that can help investors assess the market quality of an ETP. Together, these metrics can reveal an ETP's ability to offer liquidity, price discovery, and efficient access to markets in all market conditions. So the first one we're going to look at is usage. Now, uh, ETPs have matured from buy and hold asset allocation tools that let you own the markets to tools that allow you to trade the markets. Market data shows that investors increasingly use ETPs to both allocate capital as well as adjust portfolio positions. ETPs accounted for an average of 23% of U.S. equity trading volume in the first half of 2020. Um, and then, oh, I'm sorry, in 2017, ETPs accounted for an average of 23% of U.S. equity trading volume. And then by the first half of 2020, that rose to 29%. And I can only imagine that has climbed higher since then. So it gives you an example here um, saying that trading volumes in the iShares AAA, <clears throat> an A-rated corporate bond, spiked in the first half of 2020. Now, as market volatility accelerated and investors sought to generate income and to limit downgrade risk, the fund's average daily volume, or ADV, surged to over $15 million in quarter two of 2020, nearly six times its ADV in 2019. Data shows that instead of simply relying on uh, individual AAA, A-rated corporate bonds, investors increasingly turned to the more liquid ETF to access the highest rated investment grade. So that's not the case here because uh, this is not a AAA rated ETF. So that can't be the case. So likely we're seeing a lot of usage in this uh, ETF due to the fact they're constantly forced into a situation where they have to uh, constantly create and redeem shares uh, synthetically to keep GameStop at bay. Let's go and take a look here. Trading costs. So this is where market makers come into play. The, the lower the bid ask spread size is, the less money market makers are making. That's where they make the majority of their money. Uh, now bid ask spreads or the cost of trading into and out of a fund can vary significantly from ETP to ETP. Spreads can be impacted by security specific criteria, including asset class, uh, as well as broader market conditions. So it's not advantageous for the market makers to engage in this situation, but it is for the banks because the spreads being so small actually helps lower the costs of the ETP or IJR in this case. So it says here that uh, spreads can be impacted by the broader market conditions. And for example, in times of volatility, like what we're seeing right now, when market uncertainty rises, which what we're living through right now, bid ask spreads typically widen. Well, that's not the case here for IJR. It's 1 or 104.37 and the ask is 104.38. That's a 0 0.01 difference. So it's really unlikely that market makers are making money. Um, it's likely that market makers may not be involved in this because there's no money to be made and it's only the APs which can actually act as market makers in certain funds um, because the bid ask spread is small. So in times of uncertainty, like what we're seeing now with the broader market, this should theoretically widen if it were to be operation, uh, operating healthily. So we can go ahead and rule that one out too. So number three, premium and discount behavior. So real quick, let's define a word that I'm sure a lot of you are wondering what it means, arbitrage. Now arbitrage, what it is, it's the simultaneous buying and selling of securities, currency or commodities in different markets or in derivative forms in order to take advantage of different uh, differing prices for the same asset. So an ETP's market price is typically in line with the value of its underlying securities, but it's possible for the ETPs to trade at prices above premium or below at a discount. So considering GameStop's price is much higher than the NAV, the net asset value of IJR being I think around 104, um, that's not healthy either. 
Now, for example, if the price of an ETP share is greater than the value of its underlying securities, that's not the case for IJR. The ETP is said to be trading at a premium. In response, market participants may engage in arbitrage by buying the underlying securities and engaging them with an ETP issuer via authorized participant or AP in return for newly created ETP shares, which may be which may then be sold into the market for a profit. So this is what they're doing anyways, despite it trading at a discount, because they, again, they have to. If you look at the net assets for this ETF, they consistently and constantly go up, probably due to the arbitrage that is being created and implemented on a daily basis to cre increase the supply of the available ETP shares. Because when you increase the supply of the available ETP shares, that ultimately, ultimately reduces the premium of the ETP. So they're cutting costs by increasing shares while at the same time selling naked uh, synthetic ETFs or synthetic shares into the market for artificial uh, pressure. And it also, when you do that, it keeps the NAV right along with the uh, underlying ETP. So the goal is to get the NAV and the ETP you know, price trading uh, near each other. Number four, tracking. So tracking measures the difference between a fund's return and the benchmark index's return. Tracking volatility measures the volatility or the standard deviation of this tracking difference month over month. Now, the volatility on this is high. Again, another reason why the bid ask spread should be increasing, but it's not. So if you look right here at the XTSLA fund, that's the number one holding in IJR. And I guarantee you the reason is it's because it's lowering the cost of the NAV as X Tesla shares are valued at $1 each. So by having this big fund in there with like 800 million assets, it's weighing it down um, at a dollar a piece. That is going to keep this NAV constantly lower than the uh, underlying shares like GameStop and things like that, which will constantly put them in a state of arbitrage or creating more shares to keep the cost down. So it almost seems like a hamster wheel that never ends. Now, lastly, primary market efficiency. Even though most ETP trading occurs in the secondary market where investors buy and sell existing ETP shares on an exchange, efficient, efficient primary market operations, or the creation and redemption of ETP shares, is at the heart of ETP market quality. Primary market efficiency requires a functioning arbitrage mechanism, as previously described, which helps keep the price of an ETP in line with the value of its NAV. For example, an ETP that interacts with a diverse set of APs will have a more competitive market in which APs are motivated to capture volumes. More market participant involvement can provide additional support for ETP's primary market operations. Likewise, ETPs backed by platforms that leverage technology and scale are more likely to efficient process, efficiently process ETP primary market activity. So basically, they're in a constant state of creation and redemption because they're stuck in there because they're constantly having to keep the nav aligned um, and the X Tesla fund is how it's able to be so much lower than GameStop while GameStop is the number two holding. So it's, I guess it's this big, uh, you know, big tactical operation to try and, uh, you know, keep everything at bay. But despite their own definitions here, it doesn't seem that they're trading IJR very efficiently to me. So that's the whole point of this video. Hope it taught you something. Time to get baked.